It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Welcome to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International with Dr. E.K.D. Quick. With your Bible in hand and your heart open to learn, let's join the teaching in progress. From the book of Colossians, we are continuing our teaching series on the book of Colossians, chapter by chapter and verse by verse. The book of Colossians in the New Testament, founded indirectly by the Apostle Paul, and we know this based on his missionary journeys as outlined in the book of Acts, particularly Acts 16 verse 6, Acts chapter 18 verse 23, and Acts chapter 19 verse 10. Although Paul did not personally attend the Colossian founding of the church, his influence of touching a multitude of individuals for the gospel of Jesus Christ in that area allowed individuals to be gathered in the city of Colossae and found the church of Colossae. This is also evident in chapter 1, verse 7, with him who ministered to him, Epaphras, was the leader of the Colossian church. Scriptures teach that Paul spent years teaching in the school of Tyrannus in the city of Ephesus. Also, Scripture teaches that Paul made numerous journeys in that area, influencing individuals by name throughout the New Testament Scriptures, where these individuals founded, led, supported churches, all under the auspices of the conversion teaching of the Apostle Paul. The book of Colossians was written approximately between 62 A.D. and 64 A.D., written from Paul's first imprisonment in Rome. The book of Colossians is one of four prison epistles, along with Ephesians, Philemon, and the book of Philippians. The book of Colossians has a number of themes. The main themes is the emphasis on Christ as the head of the church, the fullness of Christ, exhortations to Christian living, and particularly refuting intellectualism. Individuals that were a part of the Gnostic teaching, the cult of the Gnostics, which taught that knowledge is the way to God, and there was an inner light that was given to those who were super Christians, to those who were above other Christians, based on their knowledge of this inner light. They also taught, unfortunately, that Christ was created, that he was a part of a series of creations from God. This cult came from the teaching that all matter is evil and the spirit is good. This was a result of answering a question that how could God create evil. And in their cultish conclusion, they decided that Christ was a creation from God as to not attribute evil to the original creator, God himself. Unfortunately, they did not understand the scriptures where all good comes from the Lord and evil comes from the fall through the rebellion of Lucifer, or as his name is now, Satan. Also, the book of Colossians begins to teach the danger of trusting in Jewish rituals with the combination of adding Greek philosophy into the Christian faith, as we'll see when we begin to teach through the scriptures. This is the teaching on the book of Colossians, chapter 3, part 1, verses 1 
through three. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Here in verse number 1, we see that word if again. This word if is written over 1,500 times in the Bible. Here it does not mean since ye have been risen. It continues to mean if. A question, a challenge for the Colossian church, challenging their commitment to Christ. If you are trusting in Christ, then are ye risen with Christ, challenging their faith with the word if. If presumes choice. If presumes a fork in the road where individuals can continue to trust in the Lord or they can shipwreck their faith. They can continue to love the Lord with all of their heart, mind, soul, and strength or they can give their heart to another and backslide. Verse 1 also speaks of being risen with Christ. When Christ rose from the dead, we rose from the dead. In the newness of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And as such, we are here being instructed to seek those things which are above. Not earthly, not carnal, not sensual, but the things of heaven in terms of righteousness, holiness, peace, joy, and the love of God. Scripture teaches in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Psalm 27, verse 4, David said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Scripture teaches to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This scripture in verse 1, once again, encouraging us to seek things from above and not things on the earth. Yes, accomplish your Christian goals in the Lord while you're here. Yes, we raise our family, work on our jobs, we handle our responsibilities, But our final goal, our heartfelt goal, a desire to seek the things which are above. Verse 1 also speaks of Christ sitting at the right hand of God. This once again speaks to the intercession of the Lord Jesus Christ. For scripture teaches there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Verse 2. Two speaks of our affection, our desire, our longing, our heart on the things which are above and not on the earth. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Scripture teaches where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. We as believers love not the world, but we love the Lord and the things that are heavenly. Verse 3 speaks of us being dead in Christ. Once again, a picture of the baptism in Christ to where the old man is dead and the new man is alive in Christ. The old man is dead, therefore the desire of the old man is dead. As outlined clearly in Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Scripture teaches in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that we are dead to sin. The old man dead, and the desire of the old man dead, and the new man empowered by the Holy Spirit 
is no longer under the dominion of sin. Sin no longer tells us what to do. We are no longer compelled to sin, for we are led by the Holy Spirit. Scripture teaches, in Jesus Christ we live, in Him we move, and in Him we have our very being. Verses 4 through 7. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Here in verse number 4, the Lord will come back and come back with his saints. The next item on the Lord's biblical calendar is the rapture of the church, where the Lord comes and takes away the church right before the great tribulation. After the great tribulation, he will come again with us to put down the battle of Armageddon and then to reign and rule with Christ for a thousand years on the earth according to Revelation chapter 20. Scripture teaches in Revelation chapter 19 verse 14 that we shall return with the Lord. Scripture teaches in the book of Zechariah chapter 14 and the book of Jude that the saints shall return with the Lord. This scripture, verse number 4, teaching that we're looking onto Jesus. We're looking onto life. We're looking to appear with him in glory. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Scripture teaches, he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Scripture teaches in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53, that this corruptible body will put on incorruption, this mortal body will put on immortality. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse number 5 teaches on mortifying the members of our body upon the earth, or to put to death our members, that we may not fulfill carnal and sensual lusts. This is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is done as individuals walk in the Spirit. As Scripture teaches, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Verse 5 is teaching on putting to death fornication, unlawful sexual relations outside of marriage, putting to death uncleanliness, Things that would defile us spiritually. Putting to death inordinate affection. This is the compulsion and the out of control desire to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Evil concupiscence, the burning of the flesh. Covetousness, which is a longing desire for things that do not belong to us. Scripture here calls it idolatry. The worshiping of things other than the Lord, such as money, power, positions of authority. These things in verse 5 triggers the wrath of God in verse 6. The wrath of God, the judgment of God. Verse 7 teaches that we all walked in these things in the past, but now as Christians, we walk in the Spirit that we may not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verses 8 through 9. But now ye have put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. 
Verses 8 and 9 once again speak of our old lifestyle, the way we used to live before we were saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we were led by the desires and dictates of the flesh, when we were carnal and sensual. Verse 8 gives examples of our sensuality and speaks of anger, where the Bible says, Be angry, but sin not. Wrath, which is the outburst of anger. Malice, which is trouble and hatred. Blasphemy, speaking ill against the Lord and others. Filthy communication, vulgarity and obscenity. Scripture teaches in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. When individuals are truly born again, their conversation will change, their speech will change, because their heart will change, and the things coming out of their heart will come out of their mouth differently and give evidence that there is fruit being produced and a change in their life. Verse 9 speaks about not lying to each other, being truthful and honest, and also speaks of not exaggerating ourselves one to another. This is a form also of lying, telling white lies as individual calls them, or exaggerating ourselves one to another. Boasting ourselves and being legends in our own mind is a form of lying. Verses 10 through 14, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bonded nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all things, put on charity, or unconditional love, which is the bond of perfectness. These scriptures in verses 10 through 12 is echoed in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24, and states, And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Here in verses 10 through 14, Paul is once again teaching on a change for the individual that believes and has been saved in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 10 through 14 speak of a new conduct, a new conversation, a new lifestyle that's different and opposite from the previous verses in 5 through 9. Verse number 10 speaks of walking in the newness of Christ, living in the Spirit, representing God's ways. This image of Him that is spoken of in verse 10 is the newness in Christ and represents the image of God through Jesus Christ. For example, we were created in the image and likeness of the Lord. That image and likeness was marred in the Garden of Eden from the fall of Adam and Eve. Now, through Jesus Christ, this image of the Lord has been restored in us through Christ Jesus, and now we can represent the true image of God, which is love and joy and peace, long-suffering, and the characteristics written here in verses 10 through 14. Scripture teaches, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Scripture teaches, 
in Romans chapter 12 verse 2 to be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 11 teaches that this could happen for all individuals. All persons in Christ can be changed and put on the new man. And there is no longer any distinction between Gentile and Jew. Barbarian, which speaks of uneducated, or Scythian, which speaks of savage. Bond individuals who are servants or individuals incarcerated, nor free, but all who are saved and born again are in Christ, free in Christ, washed in Christ, restored in Christ, and can now put on the new man. Verse 12 speaks of the Colossian church and all Christians being chosen by God and chosen to have compassion one for another. First Peter chapter 3 verse 8 states, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Romans chapter 15 verse 1 teaches, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Verse 13 speaks of laying aside arguing and quarrels, having patience one to another, and forgiving one another. Why? Even as Christ has forgiven us of our sins. Verse 14 speaks of the love that can be found in our new walk in the Lord Jesus Christ. These verses in 10 through 14 teach on we as Christians putting on the new man, walking as the salt of the earth and the light of the world, walking in the spirit, producing the fruit of the spirit, and no longer walking as the old man or living as the old man in verses 8 through 9, but living as a man that's been changed in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the teaching on the book of Colossians, chapter 3, part 1. And on today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, or if you have strayed away from his love and kindness, I invite you to pray with me this prayer, this prayer of rededication, this prayer of salvation. Won't you pray this prayer with me? Oh God, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me today. Forgive me, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you for listening to the teaching ministry of Life Changing Ministries International. LCMI is a Christian non-denominational teaching ministry based solely on the Holy Bible, dedicated to pleasing God, glorifying Jesus Christ, and ensuring that the Bible is the foundation in everything this ministry proclaims and endorses. For more information, log on to our website at lifechangingministries.com. Please join us again next time for more Bible teaching. And remember, we have the victory through Jesus Christ.